You've been accepted into the Predator clan. Here's your look at the new Hyatt Toys exquisite mini Predator 2 Elder Predator. Exquisite Mini is the new stand series of 1 18th scale super articulated action figures from the folks over at Haya Toys. The first thing we'll do is figure out how tall the Elder Predator is. So we'll put the tape measure right to the very top of its head and stopping the tape measure right there. We're looking at 4.5 inches high. In centimeters, let's switch that over for you as well. You're looking at about 11 and a half. Well, exactly, 11 and a half, 11.5 centimeters tall. This Predator does come with a series of interchangeable options, accessories, and all whatnot. But first thing we'll have a look at is this neat looking display base that he comes included with. A rather dirty to brown surface flooring in which it does have a single peg in which we'll attach to the Predator. I'll show you that in a second. I deduced that this perhaps could be the flooring of the Predator ship taken from the very end of Predator 2. A Film, I feel, doesn't get as much credit as it really does deserve. Taking an example of a film being a sequel, it went a different direction and a different approach altogether, and maybe that's why people don't like Predator 2 as much. But I do like it because it's so distinctly different from Predator 1. It's not just recopying what worked so well in the first film, but I digress. Some nice texturing, as you can see, as the light captures it quite nicely, bouncing off the surface. You can see little cracks and elevated surfacing of texture. And of course, one can't overlook. Yes, there's the single peg there that's going to attach the figure's foot. Before we do that, though, I want to show, also show you that he comes with these little eye bars. These little connector bars that, as you can see, if I flip it underneath, you've got slots here, slots here, slots here, and right there as well. You can take the little slots, these little tab connector points, I really only need to show you with the one, but I'll show you with two nonetheless. It just sits in those grooves. It's a little bit more trickier because I can't flip this upside down. But what you would do though, is if you had a second, a third, and a fourth display stand of a similar size in nature, you could connect these to one another on this side. Mm, mm, mm. And you can continue and expand out the diorama in which all your Predator figures are going to stand on top of. Or if, say, for example, you want to make use of these display stands for some of the Colonial Marines that we've also had to look at from Hyatt Toys or other Predators, you can certainly make use of those, as I believe they all use the same universal peg. Now, speaking of universal peg, or at least the pegs coming included with these figures, I find that the peg is a little too big. I mean, it can still fit. There's the hole right there. It's still easily, well, I shouldn't say easily because that would debunk what I was just about to say. It fits in his foot eventually when you do apply a lot of pressure to it. I guess the intent was when they made the peg larger is being that you have to force it on as much as you do, it guarantees that the figure isn't going to definitely go anywhere. And I think to that credit, it's a successful pegging, but it does take a lot of extra pressure simply because the peg is much bigger than the peg hole of the Predator's foot. Okay. Before we look at some of the other treats that come included with this figure, I also want to show you this. Inside the packaging, in theory, I suppose, could be a little diorama back card. I feel as if this could... I want to say that's Wolf from AVPR. Not 100% certain, but uh, you could have a nice little background diorama display. It doesn't attach anywhere. I mean, this is just like a thick cardboard card. But it is a nice little, I guess, added bonus if you want to have it displayed behind the figure. Something that you may not necessarily need to display behind the figure, but also coming included behind this card in the packaging, is a little brochure. You know how much I love these. This shows you everything that we've gotten and will be getting from the folks over at Hyatt Toys, at least of the Predator variety. Here, you will you won't see necessarily any aliens, but you'll see all the Predators. City Hunter, Guardian Predator, City Hunter Predator, Guardian Predator, Shadow Predator, Boar, Warrior, Elder, I've just omitted Predator, but... It's the same thing that applies for all of them. 
Stalker, Lost, Shaman, and last and certainly not least, Scout. Want to follow Hyatt Toys? Don't blame you. You can head over to Twitter, twitter.com forward slash Hyatt Toys. Let me spell that out for you. H-I-Y-A Toys, T-O-Y-S, Toys. Facebook.com forward slash Hyatt Toys, spelled the exact same way. And uh, you can also uh, follow them over on their, well, you don't follow them necessarily, but you can check them out over on their face, their uh, their website page, www.hyattoys.com. By the way, big thank you to Hyatt Toys for supplying the Predator figures that we are going to be having a look at in the next series of reviews. Bring the camera down ever so slightly. Bring the camera in ever so slightly. Let's have a look at some of the other accessories that come included with the figure. Why don't we have a look at this one? This is probably one of the more famous things that one would probably generally think of when you think of the Elder Predator. And that is the little flint lock pistol. First making an appearance in the Predator 2 film, but of course expanding out its lore in the 19 or 1718 Predator comic. This is the flint lock pistol owned by pirate Raphael Adelini, 1715. Um, by the way, a nice little interesting, if you like uh, period pieces of Predator folklore, I suppose, check out the Predator comic 1715. Gives you a nice little backstory here on the flintlock pistol. Uh, anyways, though, the flintlock pistol here, it is a little harder, of course, to make out, but there would be an engraving on it. Hyatt Toys can't, obviously, for the size of it, be able to capture. But it would have had a little engraved plate on the side that which would have read Raphael Adelini, 1715. You just can't see it on there. You could put the, the flintlock pistol in the Predator's hand. I think when it comes time to displaying these figures, I'm probably going to, like, display the flintlock pistol as if he's handing it to Danny Glover. A nice little way to nod it back to the Predator second Predator film. So he does come with that. That's pretty cool. I like that. Other things he comes included with, uh, the plasma caster is already mounted onto his shoulder. I kid you not, I didn't do anything to that. I didn't have to install it when I first got it out of packaging. Um, the Predator also comes with a bladed sword. It's got some nice curvature to it. No blood or anything like that, but painted here in silver. You can see that the handle has been crudely, I shouldn't say crudely, Predator won't take kindly to that, but the handle has been crafted using the end of a bone. And you can see how it's been wrapped its way to the end of the the very sharp blade. Ooh, it's not, it's not really sharp. I shouldn't, shouldn't joke about that. From what I can see, there is no place that you can put the blade on the Predator. So, I mean, for the time being, you're going to either display it in his hand or I guess if you wanted to I mean I'm kind of looking around there's no real placement I guess you could kind of slide in the back that might look a little crude I thought here at one point that there was this opening here and let me just double check there oh there is an opening okay initially it didn't look like an opening it just looked like the skull was kind of in the way but if you tilt it slightly yeah there is a slot right there I don't know how possibly you'd be able to slide it in there. That's going to be asking a lot of pressure, a lot of patience. I guess in theory it should slide in there though. I'm probably not going to attempt it. As you can see right there, can you see it? There is the little hole opening. Unless this comes off, which I don't believe it does. I wonder if I could actually tilt it slightly onto the side. Let's see if I can slide the sword in that way. Well, it slides in there. Ooh, ah, ooh. Ooh, ah, oh, ooh, okay. Yeah, that's that's not gonna be that's not gonna be fun to deal with. Well, it does fit in there. The skull really concealed what I thought was just a sealed opening, but in fact the sword does sit in there. Just not something that you would want to be doing on a regular basis. And of course, one big problem too, once you slide that in place, turning the torso, if you forget completely that the sword is there, you're probably going to clip the handle and inadvertently, inadvertently break that. So I am going to take that out. Let's just acknowledge for the fact that the reviewer did find the placement for the sword, acknowledge the fact that we don't want the sword to break, and all mutually agree that we're just going to put the sword down for the time being. Everybody content with that? Okay, good. And last but certainly not least, 
I guess not last, but certainly of the weapons, last but certainly not least, he also comes in clue with the combi stick, the telescoping spear. Something, of course, we've seen from the Predators, I think introduced in Predator 2 and then expanded beyond that. Of course, most Predators now have a telescoping combi stick. Uh, it does have some nice little kind of gold, I want to say like borderline almost copper colors in there as well. And you've got the darker gunmetal gray added to the handle portion. You can see some very exquisite, oh, I see what I did there. Very clever. Exquisite details that they've added to the handle portion. It's a little bit more trickier, unfortunately, to get it around his hands because the you may want to actually put it up here rather than here. It's just the, this is an awfully thick handle. It's just really going to have a big tough time, struggling time to get that into his hand that you may want to have the combi stick a little bit further up like that. And then you can display the Elder Predator with that. Okay, pretty cool. So, oh, and by the way, it does not retract. There are no things to it that can detach, not that I can see. I guess they could have had detachable points right here but i think we're asking a whole lot out of accessories intended for a give or take about a three and three quarter inch tall figure okay so we'll put those all to the side elder predator also includes i always love these the fanned out hands these are nice little hand additions displaying predators always at some point there's going to be a scene where a predator is going ah, and he's fanning his one hand out and he's probably got like the combi stick or something else in his other hand like always that they include stuff like this uh, to change out those hands by the way you're just going to take take the little tiny hand pop that out from the little tiny ball joint and then replace the little tiny hand with the little tiny ball joint just kind of attach that back into place there we go it's always like yeah yeah see that's what I'm talking about it's always nice to display figures like this not the most dynamic, but I mean, if they're going to give you hands like this, I, at some point, I always like to include even like thumbnails. I generally like to use a predator that has fanned out hands for the thumbnails. Just a little FYI. I think we've fully, fully embraced and covered off all the stuff that comes included with the figure. So let's finally just have a look at this figure. The Elder Predator from Haya Toys. Overall, a pretty neat looking figure. This answers a long long overdue call that I've made when I was a kid. I called out to my imaginary phone and I said, geez, I wish there was a company that could make three and three quarter inch tall predators or at least scaled to a three and three quarter inch tall figure because I had G.I. Joe's. G.I. Joe was my bread and butter when I was growing up. I liked Transformers, but nowhere to the level that I liked G.I. Joe. I had vehicles, I had all the figures, and I always kind of wish there could have been a figure, a predator to the scale of those G.I. Joe's. Now we, of course, the call has been made by Hyatt Toys several, several decades later. <coughs> but nonetheless, once now physically in hand, I'm really loving this line. Hyatt Toys, of course, have covered off on Aliens as well, which we will be having a look at. And also they've covered off on the uh, Colonial Marines, something that we've already checked out on this channel before. If you didn't know I covered off Hyatt Toys stuff before, as for the face, the face is pretty good. Uh, the eyes, unfortunately, are sort of just relegated to dots. Um, I guess if you if you could, you could try to make out there may be an eyeball in there, there may be an iris in there, there may be a pupil in there, but really when you look at it, it looks like there's a real sunken in chasm, little cavern there of dark black, pitch black, black hole space. <laughs> I think we've covered the basis right there. And then, lo and behold, right in the middle of it, there's those little two dots for his eyeballs. Of course, he's got the mandibles right there. This figure does not come with an interchangeable head, not one with a helmet, at least. Elder Predator, of course, in the film, doesn't really have the helmet. It's kind of like just kind of walking out. The dreads are a nice series of different colored combinations, some blue, some kind of bluish grays in there, and of course the little gold bands. These are softer plastic as well, which also aids when you are moving the figure left and right. You're not worrying that the these are gonna be starting to bang stuff off, primarily the plasma caster, which is mounted as it should be on the back of the torso of the Predator here. Love the dry brushing of silver that they've added to the plasma caster. Of course, it does have a little posable, little posable cannon. This rotates back and forth, and this hinges back and forth this way. 
I say of course, but I guess up to the point that I'm showing you guys, you might just assume it's Staction. I shouldn't make that silly assumption. He does have a nice little necklace. I guess proportionately the necklace, uh, at least the the cording here, seems like it's a little bit too big from a scale standpoint to the overall size of the figure. But again, I'm not going to nitpick that too much. I guess I could have used a real cording, but opted instead to use more like a rubbery plastic and painted that nicely in beige with the accents there of the skulls and a lighter shade of that. He has one skull featured at the top there, also banded on a necklace. He's got like a little, it's not quite a fanny pack. Some people now would not even know what fanny packs I think are. It's been painted also primarily in brown with some little outer edges there done in the in that same beige color. Of course, we've got the belt. We've got the little holstered section for uh, the, uh, the sword, the scabbard. Uh, feature on the side there with the little skull there as well. And then we've got on the side here the uh, the blades. Now the blades do retract. They don't retract by, f well, I guess enough, but about a third of the distance longer. And it tucks back in like that. Painted in very nicely in silver. I don't know if it's just the lighting hitting it, but it almost seems like there's a slight bluish tint. Do you not see it as well? There's a little bluish tint almost on the under blades of the gauntlet here. But uh, it does pull out, I guess, a, a fair bit, really, all, all things considered. Seems almost that it pulls out longer than what it could actually fit in here. That's magic. That is magic. Of course, primarily, the body is sort of the coloring of a, of a honeybee, a bumblebee. Primarily, kind of this cross webbing here, uh, done in a very nice, almost honey yellow, really, if you wanted to look at it like that. And some accents, little stripings there of black. Once again, as we get down to the uh, the little knee guards here of, the, of his armor, once again, brushed nicely, very generously with the silver paint. There's the undersides of his feet. Not a whole lot to look at right there, other than the fact that he does have pegs on the undersides of his feet. But we're all pretty happy, pretty happy with this figure. Let's run through its posability, shall we? Head rotates back and forth. It hinges up and down. It actually hinges a lot more than I thought it was going to hinge. It hinges up to about that point, or you can angle it down. I'm guessing there might be more than one ball joint at work here. Might be one further up and then one further down. There's kind of slightly a, a glance at how everything sort of comes together. Hinges back and forth angles back and forth as well. We've already looked at the plasma caster of having some posability. The arms hinge out, but due to this little part of his shoulder pad, as you can guess it, sort of stops the articulation from going any past that point. It brings out and it stops at about there. No more after that. The arms rotate all the way around. Has a hinge that rotates the bicep all the way around. There's a hinge in the elbow. Uh, the gauntlet does rotate, and the hands also rotate via the fact that they are in ball joints. We looked at all that stuff. Upper torso ball joint, nothing apparently from the waist down. Legs split out. It has a swivel on the top cut of the thigh, which allows the legs also to move forward, moves back. Double hinge on the knee. And then finally, last but certainly not least, the feet. Now, the feet are a little bit more restricted. You can see how they rotate all the way around. I don't know if you can see it or not. See that hinge right there? Thank you, camera, for focusing. There's a hinge right there on the foot. The foot moves up, but that's about all you're really going to get from it. It's just the nature of the way that the peg is. That hinge is not really high enough, or I should say not low enough, that it gives you enough clearance to move the foot forward. It does what it needs to do. At the end of the day, it does what it needs to do. It gives the Predator some stability. Of course, the display stand comes in a big handy for that as well. I feel as if I haven't done a true service to the head sculpt. I know I sort of just glossed over it looking, once again, at the mandibles, the, uh, the dreads, if you will, on the sides of the Predator's head. I mean, again, really fantastic detailing that they've put to the side. Sort of also mimicked those little eyebrow, little extensions that... There's almost these little bristles that would have come out from the, the eyebrow area there of the Predator. Not quite captured there, but at the very least, it's got some little ridges and bumps on the side there. Even just as a pleasure to the finger, you can run your hand across and just sort of feel all the little textured bumps and details that they've added to it. 
a pleasure to the finger. I'm here all day. And there's some bumps on the top there. They've also added what looks to be just a little faint, a faint pinkish hue, just a little middle ridge here. And then of course it fans out and you've got the nice gold honey yellow uh, making up the rest of his forehead. Very, very happy, very happy with these figures. Uh, once again, I think it, first of all, I mean, I think the big thing about this particular line is it caters specifically to a type of market. Some people may like Predator figures, so you have that. Then the benefits of that as well, people that like three and three quarter inch tall figures, me specifically, I'm talking kind of to my younger self. I've always really wanted a three and three quarter inch size uh, Predator to go along with my G.I. Joes. I had to wait a very long time for that, of course, to happen. I'm a little older in the years, of course, now, but I can still find enjoyment from the fact that Hyatt Toys have produced pieces like this. For the fact that they've also produced a lot of alien figures, which we will eventually look at on this channel as well, Hyatt Toys are really turning on some fantastic pieces in a smaller scale. Now, there are different types of collectors out there that collect specific things. Predator collectors as a whole will be picking these ones up anyways, because they pick up anything that's Predator related. But then if you kind of branch out from there, and there's different categories of collectors, those that enjoy collecting seven inch tall figures, those that collect the 12 inch tall, the higher end collectibles like the Hot Toys and the Sideshow pieces, for example. But then there's also a, a line of collectors out there that collect micro scaled figures, micro sized figures, like the three and three quarter inch tall figures. People that collect the G.I. Joes, even to this day. People collected the Marvel Universe when Marvel Universe was still on store shelves. Unfortunately, that wasn't a line that was overly successful. But I think this is a line that hits that sweet spot the most. Those collectors that collect the three and three quarter inch tall figures. I myself, I know I mentioned in this review, probably at nausea, that I collected G.I. Joes growing up. I played with G.I. Joes round the clock, or at least what time I had available. And I would have loved to have a Predator like this scaled appropriately for my Joes. You know what I used for my Predator when I was playing with the G.I. Joes? I was using the old Kenner Predator that came with the Xenomorph. Yeah, that's a pretty big figure. There's no way that my Joes would have stood a chance against a Predator of that size. Not that they really stood a chance anyways. But I think this is the market that Hyatt Toys hits the most. Those that enjoy three and three quarter inch tall figures. It's not to say that if you're collecting seven inch tall figures that you're not going to want to get these ones as well. But I think everybody who enjoys the three and three quarter inch scale, there's just something about that scale that has a magic to it. I think people that have the loyalty to that line will collect a lot of figures of that same three and three quarter inch size. And Predators, this Predator, for, for example, and all the other Predators that Hyatt Toys are releasing fit perfectly that market. Unfortunately, with the price point on these being a little bit more steeper than the conventional three and three quarter inch figures that you may see in store shelves, can you even find three and three quarter inch figures anymore in store shelves? Either way, though, the price point on these are a little bit more expensive. But I think the trade-off, though, is a superposable figure, pretty detailed, full of accessories, and, of course, a neat-looking display stand to showcase them in any which way that you want. By the way, these are superposable as well, which means you can get them in various different poses. I suppose at the end of the day, I had to make use of the fanned hand, and that's going to be the way I'm displaying my Elder Predator, or I'll likely display him with the pistol. Either way, fine work from Hyatt Toys. If you guys are interested in picking these ones up for yourself, some good news is that all the exquisite mini Predator 2 figures, the new lineup of figures, are now hitting comic book store shelves, if you are interested in picking this one up for yourself. Today we were having a look once again, and thank you to Hyatt Toys, we're having a look at the Predator 2, Predator 2 exquisite mini Elder Predator. And I just realized in final looks, I probably said Elder Predator or Predator as a whole. Probably said Predator about 35 times, maybe even more. If you guys want to go back and have a look at some of my other Hyatt Toy reviews, there's a whole playlist just for Hyatt Toys. Also hit that little subscribe button down below if you haven't done so already, and certainly more videos will be coming your way. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.